What I've done here is I've got a loop going down there, so I'll put one end of the log through that, and I've got another loop over here, and then I'll put the one other end of the log through that. And then I'll be able to pull on these ropes to raise the log. And I've got to, got to make sure it's coming across the ridge beam here from this side and across the ridge beam on this side so that the rope doesn't get jammed in these cracks. I'll still be able to make the adjustments and when I come up to put the cross beam, I'll be able to get it in exactly the right position and hold it there so I can mark out the joints. Now this worked, but the friction on those ropes was still pretty intense, and that had some some pros and cons. Uh, the con was that I had to lift the end of the timber in order to get uh, it to move. I couldn't just pull up the timber on the rope. The, the friction was too great. But on the other hand, there was enough friction there that by putting slack on one side, adjusting my hand grip, and then pulling until I drew up that slack as I was lifting one into the timber, meant that I had a lot of control over the process and there was little risk of it, you know, slipping and falling, uh, even though I was doing this by myself. Now, ideally, you want to do it with, with, you know, with help. And if the friction was an issue, you'd want to put some pulleys up there rather than just relying on the rope. But it worked. Uh, now, some of you might be asking, why is he using such a large, chunky timber when the poles are so small? And I'm going to be talking about that in the next video. Uh, and this arrangement wasn't just good for getting the piece of timber up there and marking it so I could you know, lay out the joints, but it was also really cool for when I had the joints roughed out, but then needed to fine tune them and fit them in the air. But stay tuned for that. It'll be coming shortly.